This is something I've been waiting over a year to purchase. Yes, I purchased this with my money. I had a lot of time to think about this. Taken, taken. About this and this and this. Whole house audio, distributed audio, distributed video, multi-zone audio. The system that you're looking at is closer to $3,700. And yes, I know that's not cheap for many people. However, when you start to look around at what's available in the market for a controller, for a multi-zone amplifier, you could spend more than $3,700 on a single multi-zone amplifier that has the capabilities of the amplifier in that box. Love it. The very first thing I get is a warning. It also shows, is what I ordered. Designed in the USA. Made in Taiwan. Actually, that's a good sign. Some of the boxes say made in Taiwan. Some of them got packing paper. Here's what's in the box. You're going handheld, bro? Going handheld. Here's the IR repeater transmitter that lets you pass those IR signals. I know, I'm very technical in my wording here. Testing cable, Ethernet cable. Oh, it was Cat 5E. I'm sure you find this fascinating. Oh, here's the other one. There's two of them. This one has two of those eyes on them. Some movie magic here. There we go. Link touch. For the money shot. Pretty good packaging. Double boxed and sealed this is. Has some screws, hardware, power button, favorite button, microphone, intercom. You can also use this as an intercom system to call to other places in your house. And we have the two Ethernet ports on the back, plus another port. I think this is for connecting an input panel. Say you had your phone, you want to connect it, you'd have a separate panel that you would have to daisy chain, and you can daisy chain those through Ethernet or this. Otherwise, it's a box, it goes in the wall has a touch screen. This, this is their GWSL1. There's a power plug. This is a, I believe, R232 serial cable. And that is for this GWSL1. Here's where a serial adapter goes. The ethernet port that will be used to connect this to the controller. This is how you can control the system through your phone, through the HTD app. This might be a spoiler. These are their high dynamic range speakers. So this is an in-ceiling speaker, the R65. This should be a six and a half inch speaker. Okay, styrofoam, lovely. What could go wrong? We'll just dump it. <laughs> that is very simple packaging. Cut out sheet, this is perforated. So this is going to easily pop out. Discard this section. So there's a centerpiece there. That's fine. Even the styrofoam has the model number on it. This is like Christmas, only more difficult. There's a grill cover. It's lacking the trim. So this will basically seal the whole face of this in the ceiling. And here's the speaker. So this has a trim on it. And this is second option. So with all their speakers, you get these grill options. It looks like this is just inset, and the other one, if you took this out, you would then simply clamp it over like that. That's the one option, or you have it inset to the frame of the speaker itself. Eight ohm terminals here. Of course, you have the anchors to grip the drywall and the ceiling. This box is the eight inch speaker. So the speaker's made in China, the electronics components made in Taiwan. Here's the next victim. This is the Link 12 controller. So they have a Link 6 system, which only does six zones. This does up to 12 zones. Called in backup. You know, I know they package this well. Probably shouldn't be so afraid to just cut it open. A box within a box on top of a box. I feel like I'm on an HTD inception right now. That dream! Within a dream. I've got cables. Oh, oh my goodness. Yes, this is the controller. All these RCA cables are going to connect from the controller to the amp. That'll be fun. Just for fun, let's go in here. Oh, 
There's the controller. This thing is massive. Massive. Where's my tape? 17 inches of glory. You can't see it, but it's 14, well, plus the terminals, almost 15 inches deep. You know, the lighting here probably sucks, doesn't it? Go on their website. They got great pictures on their website. HTD.com, Home Theater Direct. Here at the back, output to amp, double sections. You can see zone ones through zone six, through zone 12, pre-out. Six zones top, six zones bottom, variable fixed. There's that RS-232 interface. They got global IR out, 12 volt trigger. There's a door interface. Yes, you can do a door intercom. The downside is they don't offer a door video doorbell and this probably won't work with a video doorbell. However, they do have the intercom. The IR out, source input. Uh, you can see here these ethernet ports. This is where all of those keypads, the link touchpad, that's where it plugs in. There's a power button. The zone status, source signal strength for one through 18. Just over five inches. In the bottom of the box, there is a power cord and a digital optical cable adapter. Trigger cables between amplifiers and a trigger cable. Okay, great. Now that we've been triggered, we can look at some other stuff. Thank goodness I have my trusty box to hold this box. Oh, this side's already cut. Tells me there's another box within a box. It's a recurring thing. I like it, HGD. Double boxing. It makes sense. In a box? In a box. Okay, this is basically the same thing. You remember the other box had the lovely styrofoam? So does this. There's the amp. All right, let's just leave it in there. Just kidding. Oh my goodness. This thing is a beast. This is a serious amp. The DMA-1240 Digital 12 Channel Amplifier. In case you forget the model number, it's written on the front. <laughs> this is not light. This is a serious piece of hardware. What do you do? Expect me to cut it out of the bag? You must have a top secret packing system for the plastic bags on these things. Not light. Holy! Do you see this? Zoom in. Do you see this? You probably don't. Open it up, boys. This is a measuring contest. Hope you can read your numbers upside down. Five inches across for this toroid. Like I said, I'm a master of terminology. You can see the capacitors down in there. All your copper. You gotta have those for your rack unit because there's no way this thing is going to sit on the floor in your closet. This is definitely going in a rack unit. I think this is a 2U unit, which means the controller is a 3U. Who doesn't love repeatedly punching a power button, power light indicator? And then each one of these have these tiny little dimples on them. Oh, there you can see them. There they are. There. Oh, little dimples. I'm gonna grow up to be a soccer player. These are little volume knobs, if you didn't know what the abbreviation for fall meant. The beauty of this is, you notice there's 12 of them, and this is a 12 zone system. This limits the output. So when your cute little kid turns into an awful teenager and they love to play everything at 11, like Spinal Tap, <laughs> who doesn't? You can only hope they're listening to music is good. You can come in here and say, eh, I think we're good at 40%. And this will cap that whole system. So no matter how much they try to turn up the volume on their own source control, the speakers hooked up to this amp will say, nah, -uh. little caps. I'm sure it's fine. Left and right. I don't know what that is, I can't remember. I'm sure it's important. If you know amps, you know what you're looking at. You'll notice there's one through 12 channels numbered here. The even are in white circles. The odd channels are uncircled. And then just binding posts. This amp, you can see there's a bridged mode. There's a left, left and right, right. There's the one, two, or line. So you got some options there. The pluses and the minuses, this over here which is the on, auto on, or only come on when I'm triggered. Triggered! Everyone loves to be triggered. There's the power cord in the bottom of the box. That's all that's in there. Streamline packaging. They must have this down to a science. I got a confession. I'm sweaty like that. I already showered tonight and I wasn't really planning on having this much manual effort. That's what she said. 
And I already know what's in these boxes. But I'm gonna open it. You know what? I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna stick with it. Demonetized. I'm using a dull camouflage knife. I must know what I'm doing. I was not planning on this. These boxes go to the bottom. We've opened boxes on top of boxes. Maybe we can open a box within a box. You're not gonna believe this. A box within a box within a box. Inception. It's the HDX R80, which is basically the same looking box as I opened. It's just beautiful cardboard brown. We already know what to expect. This is just like the other one. Just bigger. That's right. Just bigger. I'm sorry, but it's getting late and I'm tired. Somewhere in these boxes is packed a treasure. I'm betting it's this box. Oh. These are also made in China. However, this R65 AIM is the high definition, a six and a half inch with an aimable tweeter. The tweeter can be aimed in the direction you need it. And this is the speaker that was recommended to me. This, not the eight inch, no, no. But it's interesting that this six and a half inch is what was recommended because it's a 5.1 system. Now I know there are better ways to do home theater system, but these in ceiling speakers are what I can do. It's the WAF. Sorry, it's the WAF. All these goodies, they have to hide in a closet. My wife demands that I remain in the closet. It's where I've been for the last nine years, but no more. <laughs> no more. I'm coming out! Here's the aim. All their speakers have this switch, plus or minus three decibels. This should be aimable. I can see glue all around the base of that felt pad at the bottom. Here's your connectors. For testing purposes, I've hooked up the SDX R65 to an old receiver. It's only connected to the right channel, but this is just a little bit of audio test. The HDX seems to be color-coded blue, whereas the SDX line has red as its color of choice. The cone, definitely different on the SDX line. This is a lower model. SDX is the lower model, HDX, higher model. Instructions say that it will sound thin or tinny before being put in the ceiling. Clearly sitting on a power cord box is not not the best way for this small speaker to perform. I've decided to keep this system. Even after breaking it all down, this massive pile is left here. You'll need a big space to break down all this packaging. However, if you love opening packages, pick up one of these systems. 